What is up guys, so my name is Brandon and today I'm going to be making a video on how I passed the CPA exam. Alright, so let me just give you a quick backstory of myself. So I graduated uh, from college with a Bachelor's of Accounting in 2018. Uh, my GPA was probably about 3.25 and my accounting GPA was barely over 3.0. So by no means was I um, one of the students who were having a 4.0 GPA. Uh, I've been working full time since graduation. Uh, in the government industry and I started studying for the CPA exams January 2019 up till June 2020 so it was about an 18 month process so let me just give you a quick timeline of uh, how I took these exams so before I do go into exactly how I did it I'm gonna give a quick breakdown of uh, how long and the, which tests I took in which order so um, I started studying January 2019 and I gave myself approximately four, four and a half months to study for FAR. So my, the order that I went in was FAR, Audit, BEC, and then Regulation. So I studied for FAR four and a half months and unfortunately I didn't pass the first time. So I restudied um, and I gave myself another three months and I took it in July. And unfortunately I did not pass FAR that time either. So then I scheduled Audit for September and then I scheduled a retake for FAR in November and then I scheduled BEC in December, and then I scheduled regulation in March, and then I did a retake of the regulation in June. So let me start now by giving a breakdown of how I studied, especially for my first two takes. So the first take, obviously you're brand new to studying for the CPA exam, and you don't know what to expect on the test, you don't know what works, and how to study for this test you're kind of just lost and you're kind of scared intimidated you heard a lot of stories about the CPA exam and how hard it can be so you kind of just your natural gut instinct is to follow what the review course tells you watch all the lectures take notes um, you go through um, all the the skills practice and you go through the simulations and then you do all the mock exams and then you just um, go through all of the material um, like one time if you have the final review do that as well that's what they tell you but unfortunately that didn't work for me as um, first time I took FAR I got a 72 um, I basically did that what they said to do I went through all of the material for FAR and it didn't work and um, what happened was I felt like I went through all the material but it took me so long to get through the material by the time that I was about to take the exam, I had forgotten a lot of the things that I did in the very beginning chapters. So chapters one, two, and three, I had no idea what it was about anymore. And um, I believe that's where I struggled with the most. So then I did a retake in, um, from, in July for FAR. And this time I thought that because I was so close with the 72 that I could kind of slack off and just study the chapters that I felt like I struggled on with my first time around. But unfortunately, when it came time to take the test, I had forgotten everything that I was good at the first time and I actually scored worse. So I got a 72 on my first attempt and then I got a 65 on the second attempt. Um, so after that, I, it was kind of like an eye-opening moment. I thought I was so close the first time and I thought that I would have for sure got it the second time, but I actually did worse. So then I had to figure out how do I study for these exams given the amount of time that I have and what suits me best. I figured that I would try to get through the material as quick as possible by actually doing the least amount possible. So my whole strategy started by instead of watching every lecture, I would actually just read each chapter. So I would go through the book um, in Becker and I would basically take notes on everything that was underlined or pretty much everything that I thought was important. So I would completely cut out listening to the lecture. So I just would go through every chapter and then at the end of the chapter I'd skip the skills practice and go straight to the multiple choice. Where I'd go through the multiple choice until I got 100% on, uh, on all of the multiple choice questions in that chapter. So basically I would go through the entire book, basically only taking notes, um, reading, and answering all the multiple choice questions 100%. So I would skip the skills practice, I would skip the lectures, and I would skip the simulations. And I would do this, um, I would try to maintain uh, one chapter a week um, 
schedule so that for FAR, for example, I had 10 weeks to get through the book since there's 10 chapters and then I would have two weeks of review and I think those two weeks to review are key. So after I got through the book, I would have two weeks to review where basically I would just knock out as many multiple choice questions. So each test has a different um, number of multiple choice questions in a set. So for example, I believe Reg has 38. So basically I would just do a um, practice test of 38 questions um, consistently. Every day for those last two weeks I would try and do 150, 200 multiple choice questions um, in sets of 38. Um, and that's honestly what I felt made the difference. And giving yourself those last two weeks to just crank out as many multiple choice questions as possible. Because the more um, you do it, obviously the more that you remember, it's, it's repetition. So um, that was key in order <coughs> to help me pass these exams. I followed this method and this is what helped me finally get over the hump and start passing some of these exams. So I took audit in July and I did those steps. I just went through all the chapters I, I read, um, I took notes on the important stuff, and then I did all the multiple choice questions, and then I gave myself two weeks to review, and fortunately, um, it worked for me. I passed the exam. I passed audit with a 76, and then I, I followed the same method for FAR. I gave myself about a month and a half to review, because this was um, my third take for FAR, so I knew I didn't have to um, do everything over again, I basically was able to go through all the multiple choice and FAR and give myself another two weeks just to crank out um, as many multiple choices as I could and it worked, I passed FAR with an 84. And so for BEC, I took it in December I believe, uh, I actually only had 24 days to study for it. So for that one I was on a real time crunch, so basically I did with the same method, I went through all of. Um, the lectures, I just, I just uh, read everything and took the quick notes and did all the multiple choice questions I could. And then I gave myself about a week actually just to do multiple choice questions. And then um, luckily I was able to pass it right before the deadline with an 81. So there we go, I had about three tests done from the months of September to December. I did three tests while working full time. So um, my method I felt like was, was working. So then um, come to March, I took regulation and unfortunately I didn't pass. I did the same method, um, but unfortunately I, um, I only had a week to do multiple choice questions at the end. Uh, I was doing some part-time school um, as well as working full-time, so uh, I felt like I didn't um, study as well for that first attempt. And then um, that's basically when um, uh, the COVID hit and we were in quarantine. So from March to June, when I was finally able to schedule my test, uh, I had a three month um, period of basically where I was just doing um, a lot of multiple choice questions and I did my method as well. I had a lot of time to, I was at home. So I was able to finally pass regulation with a 83. So following that method of just uh, reading the material going through each chapter, writing down the important parts. And Becker uh, will underline a lot of the stuff in red, so I pretty much copied down what was written in red. And then I would go through all the multiple choice questions, give myself two weeks to review, uh, where I would just go through sets of multiple choice questions. Uh, it's like 30 something for each, each test is different, but they're all in the 30s. Um, I would also uh, do the mock exams for each section. Um, depending on how much time you have. I would usually, if you have two weeks, uh, after a week of going through all the multiple choice questions or just practicing multiple choice questions, I would take the first mock, um, then I would do more multiple choice questions, uh, maybe five days before your test I would take the second mock, and maybe three days before your test I would take the third mock. Uh, I would review those mocks as a lot of them helped me, I felt like on the test, a lot of it is um, a lot of the te um, mock tests are actually harder, I believe, than the actual test. That's pretty much my method of how to do things without having to go through all of the material, all of the skill practice, do all of the simulations, and that's what helped me pass. So yeah, if you guys are in the process of taking the exams or are planning to take the CPA exam in the future, uh, this was the method that worked for me. Uh, passing the CPA exams is by no means an easy task. Um, 
it takes a lot of dedication as um, pretty much anyone will, who's taken these exams will tell you. Uh, I was probably studying pretty much every day for the past year from last July since I failed my second exam uh, until I finished uh, my last exam. So the process looks tough but it's very doable. Um, I probably studied about two, two hours uh, during the week uh, after work and then probably four to five hours on the weekends. So it's still possible for you to still have um, some kind of social life I believe while taking these exams um, but definitely in the last two weeks uh, in your review period um, I would recommend um, completely shutting off um, your social life and just focusing for those last two weeks to pass these exams just think about it if you, pa if you put in the two weeks um, and put all your time towards these exams and you pass you'll never have to take that test again so it's two weeks of your entire life that you're focusing on this test and just do that four times and that could possibly be it for you. You could get the three letters behind your name and be, call yourself a CPA. Alright guys, so I guess that is it for today's video on the CPA exam. Uh, if you guys had any more questions about the CPA exam, feel free to comment down below. Uh, if you guys had any more video recommendations about anything accounting related or any more uh, if you wanted me to make any more CPA videos, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the information in it will help you uh, taking these exams. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys next video.